pleasantly surprised. Won't work on me! What's up guys, Stevie here with Lucky Crit. Some of you have been requesting that I do a video discussing the forging mechanic in Fire Emblem Echoes, since it functions a bit differently than forging systems in previous Fire Emblem titles, so let's take a look at what it has to offer. Starting in Chapter 3 of the main story, weapons will be able to be forged by visiting certain villages that have smithies. Forging weapons will require silver marks and potentially gold marks for more advanced forging, and these can be obtained from dungeons, enemies, treasure chests, side quests, and also by exchanging unwanted items and converting other marks at a blacksmith. Welcome! Originally, when we were breaking down the early footage of Fire Emblem Echoes, we assumed that units would be able to unlock skills at the certain star marks or blips after using each weapon, but as we now know since the game's release, these grayed out blips are actually an indicator of how much a weapon has been forged. Weapons can be forged from 1 to 5 stars, requiring cumulative amounts of silver and gold marks with each forging, and depending upon the item, the weapons might hit, critical, and weight have a chance of being altered with each new forging rank. After upgrading weapons enough times, they may also be able to evolve into other weapons, which will allow you to increase the rarity and statistics of the items in your arsenal. Some items will also have multiple forging paths, allowing you to pick and choose what they will become between a few different options. For example, you can forge a steel lance into either a javelin or a silver lance. Some weapons, like the longbow, zweihander, killer bow, and others, are also completely unobtainable outside of forging and the Inner Sanctum DLC maps. As a general consensus, if the forging will require a gold mark, the item will likely become an exclusive weapon. If you're wondering which items evolve into what, or what the potential boons and gains of forging any item in the game will be, head on over to Serenus Forest's handy forging section for more information. Links, as always, are in the description below. Do be sure to be careful when forging your weapons, as when they're forged and changed into different weapons, you'll no longer be able to learn the skills from the original weapon from that item. For example, units who haven't learned the skills Wrath Strike and Wind Sweep from an Iron Sword will miss out on continuing to learn those skills if you upgrade the weapon into a Steel Sword Welcome. due to the fact that the Steel Sword unlocks Sunder and Crosswise Cut instead. While you can certainly find other Iron Swords throughout your journey, be sure to be mindful about who in your army has learned the skills from each weapon, as with certain items like the Golden Dagger, you won't be getting another one, so once it's been upgraded, you'll miss out on learning its skills on any of your units forever. Also, do keep in mind that these learned skills are only usable while equipped with the item you learn them from, so certain skills on weaker weapons might not even be worth learning on everyone later in the game. Items can also be given nicknames, but this is just a further customization and a personal touch for your items, and won't affect anything in-game. There aren't any characters with personal skills this time around that'll make use of it. Throughout your journey, you may also find rusted weapons that, when forged, have the potential of becoming several different items. Please note though that the item that the rusted weapon will become through forging is set once you pick it up, so don't bother resetting at the forge trying to get different items out of them. I'm looking at you, Golden Sun. Once you have a sufficient amount of silver or gold marks, it will also be possible to exchange between the two via currency conversion, also known as the convert option, at any blacksmith. It will cost you 500 silver marks for one gold mark, and one gold mark will be exchanged for 100 silver marks. If you also end up exchanging a weapon that you previously forged, half of the value of silver or gold marks invested into the item will be obtained from the exchange. Gold marks are rather limited and considerably rare within the main game, unless you trade in large amounts of silver marks for them, but they'll be more plentiful in the DLC chapter Wealth Before Health. Wretches and Riches will also give the player an opportunity to get more marks, but Wretches and Riches can only give out silver marks. Outside of the DLC chapters, the only place where you'll be able to reliably farm gold marks will be on floor B9 of the Thabes Labyrinth, a very very late game dungeon, where you can find some by cutting down the grass near the Sacred Springs. There's a 1 in 6 chance of finding a gold mark, and you should be able to find 3 on your first trip to the room, 2 on your second, and finally 1 on your third. This allows you 6 chances per journey into the labyrinth, and can be repeated by leaving the labyrinth completely and going back through it. Though it might arguably be faster to farm silver marks and convert them into gold marks at the blacksmiths, farming in Thabes is also a great place to hunt for some of the incredibly rare and powerful weapons like Astra, Luna, and Soul. And no, I'm not talking about the skills. This time around, they're incredibly rare weapons that we can talk about in a future episode if you guys are interested. A few items, like the Keepsake Ring, Exotic Spices, and others, can also be exchanged for gold marks when turned in, so keep your eyes open for these. Those of you who have made progress through the game and are wondering what to do with the Shadow Swords you come across will also be excited that there's actually a much better use for them than their initial form. Shadow Swords are cursed weapons that have a chance to backfire and damage your characters when attacking, like the Devil Weapons in other Fire Emblem games. 
On a classic playthrough, using these weapons would not be recommended, as they may end up killing your own characters and require you to backtrack with the Milo's turn wheel or restart the chapter completely. With forging though, you can make them into Brave Swords. Brave Swords and Fire Emblem Echoes actually function more like Killing Edges from the other Fire Emblem games. You won't be getting up to 4 consecutive attacks with these swords, instead you'll have a much higher crit chance at 30%. You can also then choose to forge Brave Swords into Rapiers, which deal effective damage against both armors and mounted units, which will be very useful on Alms Root if you'd like to send one over through the Peddler. There's also the option of making Killer Bows by forging Silver Bows, which are great weapons for your archers and will allow them to unlock the skill Hunter's Volley, providing guaranteed double attacks with boosted damage, crit chance, and accuracy. By upgrading a Rider's Bane, you can also make a Ramphaya, which grants its wielder a small critical boost as well as a boost to its damage output based upon the wielder's speed. It'll be a great lance for speedy units in your army. You can also forge Celica's Golden Dagger into the beloved Sophia, which has some pretty decent stats alongside its HP regen from its innate recovery skill, and allows Celica to learn the skill Subdue, which may be helpful for training weaker units, Swap, which will be a good repositioning skill, and her ultimate ability, which I won't spoil. The blessed weapons on both routes that are very useful against terrors can also be upgraded into the corresponding legendary regalia, Mercurius, Gradivus, and Parthia from the Arcanean games, which will be some incredible late game weapons to have in your arsenal. So what are you waiting for? Get out, grab some marks, and start forging your weapons. Many thanks. That's gonna wrap up today's episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully it has helped to shed some light on forging for all of you. Be sure to slash the thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode or learned anything new. Comment echoes in the comment section, and also let me know how your forging experience was in your playthroughs. What were your favorite weapons? Make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet so you can stay up to date on our content, and for behind the scenes information and news revealed on the fly, follow us on Twitter at Lucky Creek Gaming, and I'll see you all next time.